come together, it's gonna be combustible. This is gonna this place gonna blow up. When you're not necromancing and having fellowship with dead things, life is going to proceed from your bowels. Yes. Amen. Verse 6. I, I'm going to go through the whole thing. Then I'm going to stop. I got five minutes. But, but to be currently minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life, life and peace. Death should not have, should not be at work in us. Every time I conceptualize sin, Sin has a co-partner co called death. Sin and death are in the same, it's the same coin. Huh? So if I get a spouse that's through sin, <laughs> death is inseparable. Oh boy. It's imminent. It's going to happen. Right? I'm not cursing nobody. That's just that's the law of likeness. Everything reproduces at its own kind. Okay. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Anybody want to be spiritually minded? Yeah. Anybody want to mind the things of the spirit? Yes. yes. Don't look at nobody that ain't holding their hand up. Just look at the people that are holding their hand up. <laughs> But yeah, to be spiritually minded in life and peace. That's what I want. I long for that. I long for life and peace. I want life and peace in my marriage, life and peace in my finances, life and peace in my home, life and peace in wherever I go. Just give me life and peace. It's addictive. You get addicted. Once you taste life and peace, you don't you can see riff raff from across the street. Hey, right. Next verse, you'd be like, man, no, I'm not sacrificing my peace for your sanity, insanity. Because the carnal mind is an enmity, hostile against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed be, can be. So if I stay in carnal minded things, then I'm not subject to God. Or I can't discern the things of God. So if I'm living from another source, I can't cooperate or operate. I can't cooperate with God. And since I can't cooperate with God or I'm not cooperating with God, I can't operate from heavenly things. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. What do y'all think that means? It means I can't allow my first birth to dictate to me how I'm going to operate and relate to God. <coughs> Next verse. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Next verse. Now, come on. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Now, look at the contrast. Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ. There are different functions. Same Spirit. The Spirit of God is when we've been baptized into the body. Spirit of Christ is the same Spirit of Galatians 4 talks about. We receive the Spirit of Sonship. We're Christ, Abba, Father. So the Spirit of Christ is always connected to Scripture, our inheritance. So we all been made to drink from that inheritance, right? Move we'll on, next verse. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness, because of Christ, the spirit of Christ. Is this too much for y'all? This is basic stuff. That seed I talked about in Peter, over in Peter, that nature, the body is deactivated. It's dead. When you cooperate with the seed that's in you and you make up your mind, you know what? I'm not going to allow you to mutter. I'm not going to allow you to mock or mimic the things of God anymore. I'm not going to allow you to chastise me, to torment me, and tell me where my freedom is. Yeah. I'm not going to allow that because I understand the scripture that says, where the spirit of the Lord is, yeah. there is liberty. Yeah. And when he's acknowledging his present ministry, when we allow him to work in us, to will and to do of his good pleasure, from that aspect, from that perspective, there's a freedom that has been extended to you. The olive branch to walk out liberty has been given in you. So you can't justify the weakness of your flesh any longer because Christ is in you. Christ is in you. 
You have an earnest of the Spirit in you. Christ is in you. Is this too hard to believe? No. Then you have to feed your spirit man these things. You have to go in scriptures and feed it from that perspective. So you got to die in Romans 8. Don't let it go till they change you. Remember Jack, Jacob told the messenger, angel, I'm not going to let you go till you change me. When the last time you read something for a year because it didn't change you? <coughs> or you got bored? Because it became a novel idea to you? No. I don't let a principle go until it changes me. Because that's evidence to me that it's fruitful. If change is not evident, then that means it's unfruitful. Then it's a concept, it's a philosophy. It's claiming symbol, making a bunch of noise in my head. Eleven. Oh, yeah, eleven. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he, has, he that raised up Christ from Christ, not Jesus, but Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. So I can be quickened in my mortal body if I submit to the Holy Spirit. Next one. Therefore, brethren, we are not, we're, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. We're not debtors. I don't owe my flesh nothing. Next verse. For if you live after the flesh, you should die. But if you do the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body. You should live. Let me give you a, 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 a what is it called? It? A line of demarcation. Let me give you some boundaries. How you could know if you are in one or the other. Anybody want to know? Amen. Yes. This is it. This is the line of contrast for you. To think, move, or act. I didn't get a chance to get this to her. To think, move, or act in a manner. That is motivated by man's intellect, emotions, or will. Those who are governed, led, and energized by the natural senses are operating the flesh. I'm going to say that again. To think, move, act in a manner that is motivated by your intellect, your own language, your own interpretation, your emotions, or your own cognitive, cognitive ability, which is an aspect of the will, because you have an inclination to do certain things by your own desire. That is when you are governed and led and energized by natural senses or you've been bound to the natural realm. Y'all need me to say it again? No, no, I don't think so. The pendulum swings to the other side. The same thing, to think, move, or act in a manner that is motivated by God's intellect, his emotions, and his will concerning your life. These are those who are governed and led or energized by the word of God. So you can be energized by your natural senses. That is reinforced by the carnal mind. Or you can be energized by the word of God and the spirit of God. So you have what? Choices. <laughs> We choose each and every day. If we're going to, we can choose life, or we can choose death. We can choose to ascend, or we can choose to be confined. We can choose to let the demons operate in our life, or we can allow the Spirit of God to bring us into life. It's up to us. Amen. The choice is ours. The brunt of responsibility is upon our shoulders. And we can make up in our mind what kind of freedom we want. What quality of life we want. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at yourself. What, kind of, what, what quality of life do, do I want? Do what I really want. So that means it's going to be something I'm going to have to do with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to have to allow the Holy Spirit to work on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. And bring me to a, a desired end. I, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Yes. Thoughts of peace and not even to give you an expected end. Expected end is for us to be so immersed with God's will that nothing can break that union. Wow. Yes. It's not too high for you. you. Don't do what David and say that thing is too high for me. It's not high. Mm. The Spirit of God on the inside of you will bring an affirmation of it on mm -hmm. the inside of you. Yeah. Just think about where you are right now. How many times have you slapped yourself inside the head? <laughs> Dummy. 
Right? Because that's the law in the flesh. Brings condemnation. That's the law. I can't appease that. Not, nobody, you can meditate all you want to. You can get you can get prayer, but if you stay there, if you operate in that realm, it has something in it called condemnation. Yeah. It's a whipping post. Mm -hmm. To remind you that mm -hmm. you know what? You shouldn't be doing. It's funny how the devil say, Come on, do these things. Then when you do it, he's like, Look at you. <laughs> Am I right? I mean he invites you in and then when you get in the room he just wanna mess you up. Stay out of there. <laughs> I know it's a hard thing to say. But make up your mind and say, no, I ain't going there because you're going to turn on me. You'd rather have a conversation with them you just want to get me over there. No, I'm not. You're going to, no, no, no. Then I got to shake you for the next month. <laughs> I get immediate gratification, but yet for 30 days I'm chastised. We'll talk about it next week. We're going to dissect Romans uh, 14, 8 and 14. Because until you can nurture your spirit man, train your, exercise your spirit man to cooperate with the spirit of God, we're just going to have blow smoke every Sunday. <laughs> we're going to do like it says in uh, it was at, uh, Isaiah 26, 19. It said it just passed in wind. Remember the scripture talking that passed wind? It says no inhabitants of the earth that the world is not falling or the inhabitants of the earth is not to deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that could be a sociological experiment talking about influencing the world, but we got some inhabitants in this earth. We have a system in this world mm -hmm. that needs to fall. Yes. Amen. And we got to stop passing gas. Mm -hmm. Passing wind. Things need to change right here. In here, right now, in this moment, we got to tell ourselves, oh, change is coming. Change has to happen. I'm not going to let a Gregorian calendar to tell 